interesting questions about Christianity. Again, sitting to my right, he goes by the name of Mr. Michael Belch from Morrison Academy. Now, Mr. Michael, I'm going to ask you um, another question, but this relates more to the youth itself or the or the teenage demographic. If you notice, uh, especially with social media mm. and iPhones and Instagram and Facebook and celebrity worship, idol worship, you name it, everyone, a lot of teenagers, and I think in my time when I was a teen and when you were a teen, all of us wanted to be a celebrity. Yeah. All of us wanted to be on the headline of the magazine. Everybody wanted to be on The Insider or be on MTV, yeah. be on stage. And we'll be right back. Uh, Michael, maybe you can explain uh, what just happened. What was that whistling noise? Uh, you know, um, I think we're going to leave that one a mystery. <laughs> All right. So uh, the thing is, back to what I was saying, um, yeah, everybody wants to be famous, everybody wants to be rich, mm -hmm. everybody wants to be powerful. But there was a movie I saw, right? Um, the movie was called Bedazzled. And I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Bedazzled. I think I've seen the newer remake. You were telling me there was an older one, which I didn't even know. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a bigger fan of the older version. It's like a, it's more like a British okay. uh, version of it. Uh, but yes, there's, there's also one with Brendan Fraser. But the whole point of Bedazzled, it taught me something um, about sin and also taught you about selfish desires. Mm. And I think that happens in real life. Mm. Um, if you desire to have money, there's a cost to that. If you want to be rich, if you're rich, yes, you have the luxury to buy anything you want and buy the best mm. hotels, the best limousines, you name it. But at the same time, uh, taxes. Mm. People will tax you. People will make bad deals and get more money from you. You don't know who to trust. It makes you more paranoid. Um, fame, mm -hmm. again, yes, you're popular. Everybody, again, everybody loves you and worship you and wants to be you and gives you all the positive feedback. But again, you have less privacy. Right. Um, it also attracts people who are jealous. It attracts yeah. people who wants to find the dirt in you and to give you negative fame. Mm. There's also a cost to that. Uh, shade. Uh, Some shade. I thought he said Slim Shady. I was like, no, oh. Slim Shady. <laughs> uh, and also, but also with power, again, power is great. Everyone fears you. So you can go to a restaurant, people will like, oh my gosh, here's a free candy bar and, and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> is that all that's waiting there? <laughs> some M&Ms, <laughs> some Snicker bars. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what power does. Yeah. However, um, power... Um, people say that, oh, it's better to be loved than feared. Oh, sorry, it's better to be feared than loved. Mm. But, you know, when people will fear you, but when they, they wait for you to be weak, they wait for you to be mm. sick. And when that happens, that's when the loyalty is gone. Mm. That's when they will attack you um, because you use your power for, for, for evil, right? So I want to ask you this question. All of those things has a cost, but one thing doesn't have a cost, and that's following Jesus Christ. Mm. So I want to ask you this. What makes Jesus, what does, how does following Jesus give you joy? That's, that's a great question. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. I Actually, I can't think of a question that I would like to answer more than that one. Um, I do have to... Uh, <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, I do have to correct the host on something. You know, um, you know Max, you say that uh, following Jesus doesn't have a cost. And um, actually, it does have a cost. Uh, it's no monetary cost, but it, it does cost everything, right? Uh, we, you mentioned earlier the story of the man who came and was very rich. And Jesus said you had to give it up. It wasn't the money. It's that to follow Jesus, you have to give up everything. The cost is actually much greater in some ways than any other religion. Oh. But the reward is much greater too. Um, you know, you talk about the celebrities. I grew up in South America. My name is Michael. People always thought I was Michael Jordan. I don't know why. Michael Jordan. Uh, not six foot six, nor was I black. So, uh, <laughs> but that was the celebrity that I at least got compared with the most, yeah, wrongly. So I, I I can associate with that. You know, the thing is with the social media. And the stardom, this fascination with stardom. Um, in, in England, it's the royal family. In America, it's, you know, the Kardashians. 
Um, we have this fascination with stardom, and I think what it is is we want to be important. We want to be significant is a better word, right? And that is fundamental in every person. Mm -hmm. We want to be significant. We want to matter. We want the number of years we have here on this life to matter for something. Yes. Right? So significance, the problem is we think that our significance comes from many people telling us that we're significant. If we, if we achieve stardom, you know, 100,000 Facebook or, or, or Twitter followers will tell us that we're significant. Yes. And I will validate something. But that doesn't validate anything. That doesn't make us significant. Um, that is why the path of Christianity brings us joy. Because the person who made us tells us we are significant. Mm. And the person who knows what is significant says you're significant. Mm. Now you, you have a painting and you have your friends that say that's an amazing painting, but then some art expert comes and says that's a forgery. It doesn't matter what your friends have said anymore. You get the God that made you who knows what is real and significant. When he comes and says, you're significant. It doesn't matter if you are a poor widow in the middle of Africa or if you are a wealthy businessman in, in Taipei. Hmm. God gives us significance. Well, here's the thing, though. Jesus, again, said it's, it's easier, it's harder for a rich man to well, enter sure. the kingdom of heaven uh, but then... Sorry, it's easier for a camel yeah. um, with a needle to go through the eye of a needle. To go through an eye of a needle yeah. than a rich man, than a rich man get, get into the kingdom of heaven. This also uh, question a lot of um, Christians, also non-believers, about being rich because Jesus also said you cannot worship Mammon or the God of money or yeah. money in general yeah. and follow God because because both have two different attentions and two different end goals. Um, so, but at the same time, I don't think Jesus, when he made those verses, I don't think Jesus like did not like rich people. Right. Because again, like I, uh, we also say the life of Joseph, yep. and God blessed Joseph yep. with yep. tons of riches, yep. made him like the second most powerful man in the land of Egypt. Yep. Uh, same thing with King Solomon, <laughs> probably like the, yes. the richest man yes. in the Old Testament. Yes. God blessed him with all those things, including wisdom. But people think that Jesus did not like rich people. What's right. your What's your opinion about that? Jesus doesn't like it. Jesus likes rich people. Rich people are more likely not to like Jesus. Good answer. Okay, um, I'd give you a high five on that one. I like that. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, do you want me to say anything else about that, or no, no, no keep it going. I like it. Um, when you have a lot, right? When you have a lot of stuff, you get distracted by a lot of stuff. More stuff equals more distraction. And there's a phrase, seeing the forest for the trees, right? Um, in some ways, Christianity calls us to look through the forest and not see the trees, but to see the mountains behind it. Mm. And the more trees you have, the more stuff you have, the more you just can't see anything but the trees. That's a good metaphor. Um, and so Jesus, Jesus says, C.S. Lewis actually said it, people, and I would say rich people, are busy building mud sandcastles making these piles of mud and they think this is amazing mm. because they've never been to the sea right they've never imagined what it's like to go to the sea and to see the splendor of the ocean and the sun and Christianity is in many ways an invitation to give up the trinkets mm. right? you, you look at the God of the Bible you find a God who promises more than any other religion now it's not wealth, it's joy, it's life. How many of us feel that I get the next thing, I get the next scooter, I get the next car, and then I want something else, right? We're, we're, we're creatures of want, and only God is big enough to fill that want forever. That's a good point. And do you think that um, when I was reading the Old Testament, when Moses and his people were, were journeying through the desert, even though they, even though Moses did not reach the promised land, I still mm -hmm. believe Moses still had joy. Yeah, um, you know, and the Israel, the Israel, sorry, the Israelis at that time weren't necessarily rich, but they were mm -hmm. powerful. They mm -hmm. still had joy. They still had God on their mm -hmm. side. Yeah, 
Um, and again, like you also had celebrities today that like, uh, what's his name, Robin Williams? Yeah. Um, yeah. You saw what happened to him. Yeah. He had everything. Uh, Heath Ledger yep. also had everything. You saw what happened to him. Yeah. There's been some people where they have, they seem like they have everything and still it wasn't enough. Yeah. I saw an interview not too long ago on YouTube with Jim Carrey. Mm. And he said to the interviewer, I wish everybody in the world could have as much money as me. Mm. Because then they would realize that having this much money does nothing to make you happy. Wow. That's a good point. And we will be right back. <laughs>